nine days in, unfortunately. Wow, just, how you feel? The number, the number of people that have got COVID that went to bed is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I missed it. Did, did you miss it, Karen? Because you were at bed, didn't you? We didn't catch up, but we, we might be the only two COVID-free people. Yeah, touch wood, I've been really... I haven't had it. No, all three I of the kids have had it, and me and my husband haven't had it. And I've mm. been, yeah, all sorts. We went to bed, we've been to concerts, like, you know, with loads of people. I'm constantly touching wood. But, yeah, we've been <laughs> really, really lucky, I guess is the right word. Not sure whether it's good to just get it out of the way or not, to be honest, but vaccined up to the hilt. Well, you don't need to yeah. touch wood. You're surrounded by wood where you are at the minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> Must be the good, the good luck charm there, surrounded by loads of timber. Yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't had it for, for, for the two years. I, it hasn't touched me, thankfully. Um, and to be honest, if I hadn't have been doing the tests, I wouldn't have known that I had it. I was tired at the end of last week, but I thought that's three days of bet, isn't it? Yeah. And then it's I just an age thing, thing, Dave. I should, I should probably just take a test just to be sure. Because I tested each day during that because I didn't want to go in and take it in there. Um, and I took a test last Sunday and it was positive. But other than that, I wouldn't, if, it, if I hadn't taken that test, I wouldn't have known that I had it because it's just, other than being a bit tired, and as Paul kind of points out, probably due to advancing years, <laughs> and it's not really affected me too, too badly. So I can't complain at that. You know who classroom admin is? It's not a very helpful thing. I'll just, I'll just, um, just give me a second. Um, okay. Oh, I can't, I can't change the settings. Um, we're going to admit, I'll admit them. Um, I'm guessing they're okay. We don't actually know mm. who that is, do we? But I'm just going to no, turn the, no the, 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 um, oh, the, the only thing I'd add on the, the classroom thing is just making sure that the little sliders, um, in the class settings is set to guardian summaries. Oh yeah, of course. There's a setting in each classroom. classroom. Yeah, so there's got to be turned on in the admin panel, but the teacher's got to turn yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, I've forgotten yeah. that. Thank you very much. Yeah, if she's in the, if she's in the same OU, we should have access to it anyway. But just need to make sure that slide is. We've had a, a few staff here who have gone. I can't find it. I can't find it. And it's because they've got the guardian summaries bit unchecked. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'll check that. Yeah. So it's likewise with the. You know, switching on the meet link, link and things, it's visible to students. It's just a little one to check. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Good. So, should we, should we crack on with these? Do these yeah. updates? Yeah. As before, we'll, I'll I'll have two seconds of silence just before I start to speak. So it's an easier spot to. I should actually get myself a clapper board, shouldn't I? Like a proper filmmaker. And just so I've got somewhere neat to to crop the beginning of it because we are currently recording. So, so we're going to go for two seconds silence. Thank you everyone for joining us today on the virtual staff room. This is the last full week of virtual staff rooms on a daily basis. Starting after Easter, we'll be going to just the scheduled ones like these updates, like the Merlin Mine Mondays and any other ones that, other, that pop up if we've got product updates or anything like that for other things that we sell. We will be doing them, but they'll be all be themed. There won't be the general ones where you can just pop in anymore um, starting after Easter. And um, there's an article on LinkedIn if you want to go and read about that in my profile, but you can do that. We're going to fly through all these updates. These are the updates that came in in March. So as many of these, certainly in the early ones, may already be in place in your on your domain already. Others um, towards the end of this list um, were announced right at the very end of March, so they might not quite be there. The general pattern of updates is that normally it normally gets spread out over about 15 days. So there's some later on that I've checked that we haven't yet got on our domain yet, but they will appear within the next week or so. So just to be aware of that. So the first one is um, inserting form um, Google Charts from Google Charts from Google Call Forms into your docs, slides, and drawings, and actually the option to draw that dynamic link. I don't know if you've used that function in Google Docs or in um, slides. You can go and insert a chart from an existing. Oh, oh, yeah, you are presenting. Oh, no, thank you very much. Well done. I thought I just did it deliberately, so check you were all paying, att <laughs> all paying attention. Not really. Let me go to there. Fantastic, I am now. Okay, so I'll do that again. First one is about um, embedding linked Google Forms charts into your docs, slides, and drawings. And it already exists for... Um, charts from google sheets directly into docs and slides you can already do that now 
um, but you now be able to do it with forms and you can draw the link. So if more people submit a, a Google form response, then the charts will automatically update. So that's kind of quite neat. In the past, you could copy, right click, copy and paste them, do it that way, but it just mean, makes that embedding bit that bit easier um, to do now. So that that's that will already be on your um, and available on your domain. Um, you're going to get more information um, from people when they think there's um, an issue about malware or any comments that you're mes messaged in. You'll actually now be able to see their email as well in the link you couldn't before, apparently. Honestly, I've not even noticed that you couldn't do that before, but now apparently you can't. So you're just going to get a little bit more information to make some decisions about um, is this something I should report and block and prevent from getting through. So that's kind of quite handy. Appears on mobiles as well as on the web as well. So you've got that additional security feature should you need it. This one is Education Plus only, um, and it allows you to search for people with common names or with a job title, or our domain hasn't got a huge amount, because we're quite a small company, we haven't got a huge amount of information in the contacts for each of the people. So there's no, it doesn't tell you who they report to, doesn't tell you what department they're in. So I, I couldn't actually do a demo, but if you've got Education Plus, and you've got several Smiths in the school, for example, then you can do a search for Smith and find all the Smiths. And if you populated all their information within your domain, then you'll also be able to see who they report to, what department they're in, and all that, all the various informations. You know, if you put um, their exchange, their phone number in there, then that will be in there. So it's it's it only as good as. It will find the person, of course, but it's only as good as the other information you put into their contact details. And um, if you've got, you know, a new member of staff trying to find someone and it's only an Education Plus cloud search is only an Education Plus. OK, so a bit more about um, calendar statuses in Google Chats. If you set yourself unavailable or you are in a meeting, then you can actually tell people that you're in a meeting. Um, and then when people go to look at your status in calendar they'll see the status you choose to set that gives you a little bit more information i think it was just um there were three settings i can't remember they were active um away and i forgot what the other one was now it's changed already on ours and um, but you've got a little bit more information but the key thing about this i'm saying this maybe there are admins on here but there might all be some and um, there are some settings inside the admin panel about what particular statuses are visible for the person to set so just the person in um whoever your admin person needs to go and check that first and agree and you'll see there are three settings there they're too small for me to read but there are three different settings that you can turn on that they can declare in that, that status update and you can see here in the little gif here it's doing it in the in their email but of course it copies across to um into chat so once you've set your status it reads your calendar status that you set either in mail or in chat and you can then in mail or in calendar rather and you can then read that status in google chat and you might have noticed recently there's you get the out of office notifications in google chat if you go into a chat where you're discussing something with a colleague so it's already starting to appear certainly in our domain um, and if you're a great cat chat user that little bit more information is really quite useful i think i think we're going to see a lot more developments in chat as they move towards the removal of currents because currents have kind of served a number of purposes. And if that's going to go in June 2023, they'll start to move across some more and more of that functionality. And this calendar one isn't part of that, but more and more functionality generally that is in currently in currents will move across into chat and spaces. So just there'll be lots of developments coming in chat and spaces. OK, um, Google Sheets doubles its cell limit up to 10 million cells now. Um, that feels to me like a massive, massive data set. And if you're working with a, a spreadsheet that requires that many um, cells, I'd be wondering whether there's a better solution because that becomes very unmanageable. But it's there now. It was up to 5 million very recently. And now it's doubled and it's now up to 10 million cells. Um, should you want that? This is really neat. Um, I'm a, you, you, almost certainly if you've been to one of these sessions before, you would have seen heard me talk about the smart chips that Google are building in there now. So you can go at and start to type someone's name and they will appear in um, the, the document. You can paste a, a YouTube link and you press tab and it turns it into a nice little looking YouTube 
little YouTube icon and just the title of the video. So it looks that much better on the screen. Um, and now you can go at email and you can see in the little GIF, it actually gives you a little kind of email kind of panel at the top so you can set it all as an email thing. So it's a really nice little, um, just to build a template, a draft template in Google Docs, which is kind of quite nice. So that, that I've yet to explore precisely how that works. It's literally only turned on middle of last week and I've not had a chance to have a proper play with it. So how you move it from the template in an email into your email proper, I don't actually quite know, but it's, it is now there, so it allows you to do that. So that's quite a neat, neat little tool. But smart again, changes to chat are coming over the next 18 months, 15 months or so, because currents are going. And these smart chips are just getting better and better now. You've got them in search chips, which are a kind of smart chip, in your drive and in your mail, and you've got smart chips in um, docs and things. So it will just it will continue to get better and better, I think. And it makes for makes everything that much look look better on the page, and it's really neat. So if you do at and a person's email for, and a person's name, for example, it says, "Well, you've not shared the document. Do you want to share it?" So it prompts you to share it with them and things. It's, they're they're great little additional tools. So watch this space; or more will be coming, I'm sure. Okay, this has been a long time in the waiting. Um, I know I have requested this um, many times, and I know I've encouraged lots of people to do the same. But once you've now got um, an assignment, if you want to schedule it across multiple classes, then you can do that now. And what's really neat is you can actually set the, the, the current class you, you requested this from. So in this example on the image, um, I was in original analysis reports, and I can cop set the set the scheduled post for original reports classroom and then copy those settings to all the other classes i want to send it to or i can have slightly different times and topics for each of the classes i want to send it to so it's nice that it's not just one kind of blunt tool of one to all and all the same which you can do but you can also be quite specific about how you do it across multiple classes which is kind of quite neat so that's 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 been a long time in the waiting you know if you're a, a faculty lead or a head of department lead and you want to set a, a kind of a baseline assessment across a whole year group for example you can do it with all your classes all at once without having to reuse the same post multiple times into multiple classes so it's really neat you do of course have to be a teacher in each of the classes where you want to schedule the posts um, and that the usual limits apply 20 teachers and 980 students so You've got to be a teacher in the classes where you want to schedule this post. So you might have noticed this. I've noticed this appearing now. So it's definitely turned on in our um, domain at the moment that, that as long as more than well, two or more people um, in a meet, and if you're having a meet, chance I, unless you're talking to yourself to record something like I do sometimes, uh, it will almost certainly be the case. So in reality, all meetings will now get attendance reports. Um, get the participants name email and how long they they were there and when they joined and when they exited so that's kind of quite handy i'm just hesitating slightly now i'm wondering whether that was because attendance reports was on the paid licenses and i didn't put the label in that one I, I, i'll check that at the end i'm pretty certain that you that it's likely to be the paid licenses as was before and but i'll double check that i'll double check that and maybe chris will send it out in the email when he sends it all out to the all Okay, <clears throat> so um, creating surveys, quizzes, and more, and so on, for um, is now generally available, um, and it's basically using the Google's kind of their version of Java to add extra functionality into forms, so you can do slightly more with them um, about how you might retrieve grades, um, reading the metadata, pushing notifications out about quizzes and things. Um, I mentioned it just in case some people on the call are developers and are writing their own code to kind of update and improve bits of um, Google, bits of the Google forms and things. It's not an area I know very much about. I know in principle what it does because I've got the notes in front of me and um, but the fine detail of how that would work, I don't know. But once we've shared the slides, you'll have the link and you'll be able to go and have a look and precisely what that does. But like I said, I'm sure if you're a developer, you'll know exactly what all of this means. <laughs> so when you create a new space in Google chat, um, you can set it that anyone within the domain can now join that chat. So if it's a kind of a whole 
school chat you can rather than having to think about what's the and then you can literally just share so if you wanted to do like a whole school chat or a whole college chat you can set the ch chat space up and um, set it to all of the people send them the link and they can just simply click on the link and then they'll be able to join it that way without them necessarily um you have necessarily have to think about well does that does that group email cover absolutely everyone yes it covers all teaching staff but there are the slt in it are these people in it and so on and so forth it just means anyone within the domain can um get access to it relatively easier so if you've got like a, a google site that acts like a vle where you post things you can post things up there and any any staff member regardless of their position and regardless of what group email they're in can click on the link and because they've got a school domain or a college domain they'll be able to join that group so it's a nice neat way to um get everyone that you want to get large groups into a Google space. We use space loads with lots and lots of different customers. We've got lots of different chats going on. We normally build a chat space for any event. So we had a chat space for BET, for example. So every kind of conference we have, we tend to have a chat space because it makes the comment, the, the, the back chat channel discussions that bit easier to manage. Um, so they're a great tool. And if you're not yet using them, I would encourage you to use them, not least of which, because if you create a chat space of your own, you become a space manager. And I quite like being a space manager. I'm going to get myself a, an astronaut's outfit so I can make the very most of it. OK, <clears throat> so um, noise cancellation in Meet is already there. Um, it's set as off for default, but it's expanding who can and can't use it. Um, it's Education Plus and Teaching and Learning Plus, um, both. But if the host has got it turned on, everyone in the meet can use it. Will benefit from it. So if they're in a, you know, if you're doing a meet with someone in a in a service station, as we do sometimes, then it's handy for them to be able to turn those noise cancellation off because it it's, it works really well and reduces all the background noise. So you know, if they're having it in the in the dining room at, at school. Um, and they just need to reduce the background noise, then they can do that. And that can come alongside the, the blur options, means that you've you got a bit more um, privacy for the person in question, which is which is what you want, which is good. But it is turned off by default, so you would need to go into the settings in your Meet and turn it on. And it's, it's at the bottom, I think, if I remember rightly. <clears throat> so this is again a, another one for admins and developers but i put it in in case anyone on the call is a developer themselves you can now write little third party kind of you can write little workspace add-ons to be able to add on third party services into calendar events and this example it's i can't remember what, which one it is now but they remove the meat and put something else in what is it oh, a team mind map there we go They're adding a mind map in so this is quite neat because you know, there are lots of other tools that people use as well as Google Workspace, aren't there? So that if you are, do have a planning tool and you know mind mapping would be a good example, you can now build your own code to add that in to the into your Google Meet. So they've got those documents should you want them, particularly those that don't store. If it's you know a, a Wakelet or whatever, if you can build a little extension to add a Wakelet in there, Wakelets don't store in your Google Drive, of course, they store somewhere else. So to be able to add them in there would be a really handy little tool if you indeed use those kind of tools, but it will require a developer to write that for you and they would need to know how to do that. <coughs> oh, that's a duplicate. I don't know why that's in there. This is um, really exciting. I'm, I, 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 we don't know the fine detail of this yet. I have registered for this beta trial. Um, um, but basically, you, you, the, the, this is a new thing going to Google Classrooms called practice sets. What I think I know about it so far is that basically it'll be a whole series of tasks all grouped together with potentially YouTube videos to support students who are getting stuck or to offer challenge if they finish it too fast or whatever it happens to be. So like a bundle of activities that will allow students to work through a unit of work at their own pace and in their own time to, to suit them. Um, and it seems to me a really useful collection of um, resources um, to allow um, self-paced learning. So it, seem, it seems to me, I'm yet to see it in detail, I've only seen a little cartoon video. Um, it seems to me that it could be a really handy little thing for us to see. Andy, do you want to ask a question? Yeah, just a quick question really on that bit. Um, 
I've just made be a, a being a bit dim. Um, what does that do apart from what the normal classroom does? If you had that preloaded with, say, our, our teachers, some of them try and create their whole um, sort of learning management system within classroom and structure it in under topics. So, what what more does does uh, practice give you than a normal classroom? Um, from what I know so far, I think it, you kind of work through a whole. It's, it, in effect, I think it's like a, in effect what you've just said, but it's kind of bundled into a single assignment. So it'd be a multi-staged assignment with instructions and tasks and instructions and tasks. But if you look at the video, I think someone's just posted the fancies. Thank you very much. He's just posted that to probably the video um, of, of what it does. It looks like you can it. also add supporting resources like YouTube videos to help them. And so fine detail, Andy, I don't actually know. I've yet to have a look at it. All I've seen is the video. Um, but I think it has potential. It might be that it doesn't fulfill it. You never, you never quite know. But I've also put the link to the join um, that um, beta trial. I mean, you need to be a super admin to register for a beta trial on your domain. So if you are not a super admin, then you'll need to ask the person who is to register for you. Yeah, thanks, Francis, for that. That'd be great. Um, That's right. So, yeah, I, I would like to give you more information, but at this moment in time, I don't have it. So we'll revisit it once we've got a bit more information, once we're all started the trial. But I, I, I'm a great fan of beta trials. One of the things about beta trials that you get is you, you if you think about your feedback, in the normal scheme of things those of you who do put feedback in it either in the help menu or in the question mark in all google apps there's always the option to give feedback generally speaking you think well i'm one of you know tens of millions of users are they actually going to read this they tell us they do read everything but you are one of a very large group and if someone else is you know got a campaign going for another piece of functionality to be introduced then that will usurp it whereas in a beta trial you are a much much smaller group so offering feedback at that stage, I think you're much more likely to be heard and you're much more likely to get the things that you want because they're working with a much smaller group. So whilst you've got to be actively offering feedback to them and telling them what they think, what you think, I think it has greater impact because you're a smaller group. So I would encourage you all to join with these. And, you know, if you've got a training responsibility within your organisation, knowing what's coming down the line and what the implications are for teaching and learning is also really useful so i would be encouraging you anything that's kind of user end interface base like this and i'd be encouraging anyone that's in that position to get on the beta trial and get involved and offer your feedback and get it to work the way you want it to work so really it's like a collection of uh, assignments and uh, reference material all in one rather than doing 10 individual assignments you can put it like in a whole whole work bundle yeah that that, right. that that that's what it looks to be but you know watch this space it's just it's hard to pin it down with just that little video yeah i'll join the beats and have a look thanks yeah brilliant thanks very much excellent good so um i don't know if any of you have ever used the appointments option in google calendar it was pretty good it was okay um but it was all a bit clunky and um, they've now completely redesigned this and you can now be quite specific about how it works and how it looks the whole interface is completely different now you do need to enable it in your calendar settings first so you're going to your calendar settings enable it and then in the create button top left there'll actually be um, an option to to use this more fully and you'll see a new option appear and you can see in the little gif that it's a much nicer um layout and the look of it when the person at the other end gets it is also much nicer so it's definitely worth having a look at it so that sh probably might not quite be there yet and um, i don't know whether mine is actually i don't know I, I, I did go and look oh i did turn it on so it is there now so it should hopefully be there for most of you as well okay but i think that again that's really neat because i i think one of the things that stopped people using the old appointments option in calendar is just the look of it was a bit messy really it wasn't very well designed at all i would say so i think this one is much better and looks much better for the person and you can specify what you know what blocks of time people can book into so it's a kind of quite neat so but don't forget you've got to enable it in your settings of your calendar okay <clears throat> so someone on the call might well be able to help me with this um i was aware of markdown 
only in as much as um, if you're in Google Chat and you put an asterisk in front of a piece of text and then an asterisk at the end, when you post it, it looks bold at the other end. And uh, reading this, I now know that's markdown language. Um, markdown language is developing further. Um, I checked my um, Google Docs this morning um, and I haven't got the option to go into tools and preferences and turn this on. Um, so it's not actually there. So I couldn't even do a little play with it just to clarify what it is. But there's a whole series of little, little tools and the link will take you to it when you get the slide deck that just shows you what 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 shortcuts you can add and i think it's just about rather than going um highlight control b you just if you are typing you're typing in these symbols and it's just that little bit quicker than stopping what you're doing to type go to your mouse click highlight the text click on bold then return to your keyboard it just gives you that a little bit of efficiency and you're saving moments not hours but you know all these moments add up and you can see that there is a whole series of new things appearing those five additional things that are appearing so there'll be some kind of keyboard shortcut to allow or some kind of um character that forces the next bit of text into one of those things a heading or a link or whatever so i am using them but didn't know i was but only in chat to make text bold occasionally but there's a whole lot of them and and that's developing more to make your kind of typing more efficient save you going to your mouse each time What's that? <clears throat> so if you have someone who uses a Braille reader and um, someone that basically reads the, the um, screen for them, um, they're now getting a much better um, view of the comments in a document. And they also know if text is highlighted. Um, I don't know if you've ever turned your screen reader on. If you've got an image, for example, it will say image and then read the description. Of what the image is or actually read the title and then the description of what an image is and um, so it's that kind of thing but it's now doing it in comments and and those who use these um braille tools will be familiar with them because they'll hear they'll they're very used to the fact that it describes the thing and then gives you the context or gives you the information directly straight afterwards so it's great but and that's in the usual place if you're on a chromebook chromebook and bottom right hand corner you've got accessibility if you've turned it on in your settings if not, you've got to go into your settings and go and find the accessibility tools to be able to turn them on and they should work fine. Okay, that's that one. This is um, quite an interesting one, um, which you kind of, you're getting bits of this. This is Google's AI at work um, and you've probably experienced it most commonly in your Gmail, that it makes suggestions about what your next word might be and you can just press the tab and it accepts it so if i was to reply to an email to andy for example um, and i just go reply it would automatically populate hi andy or hello andy before and i could just press tab and it would fill that in so that's kind of quite nice that that's that's extending and um, but it, for education plus it's going to start to make some word choice suggestions it's going to make suggestions about what um tends to use and look for you maybe using a more active voice and um, it'll make suggestions to make the sentence make more sense by making it more concise and think about using easier to understand language um, all of those things are going to the education plus um, word warnings so the use of inappropriate words use of slang or this is just a bit too um not formal enough, if you like, for the rest of the thing is right across the board for all of them. So if, you, if you're using inappropriate language, that last one particularly useful, I think, for students, because that whole thing about understanding if you're writing a tweet or if you're writing for a social media post, there's all sorts of abbreviations, lol, that you can use, but you wouldn't necessarily use them in a formal letter to your bank, for example. So understanding word warnings that, that are inappropriate, which I think might be quite handy. Um, but that's this is late in March, so they're probably not here yet. But you'll probably notice more and more. If you're on Education Plus, you get a much wider range of suggestions. And um, if you're on any of the others, um, then it will also give you um, word warnings, but it won't give you the first box on the left there. So that's kind of quite nice. And uh, this is a it's interesting. You sometimes see these kind of webinars aren't you about you know the future of ai or ai in education if it's as if it's about to be coming when it's already here we're already experiencing it now and of course there's more to do it's not going to finish 
of what we've got currently but google have got ai built into most of their apps already and we are already benefiting from that and this is just a another example of that so it's a it's a great tool ai is kind of interesting to see where it's going to go but it's already here and already helping us okay good those are all the updates I, was, I think I probably rushed those a bit because I felt like there was a real, there was a lot. There were so few last month. It like, took me 15 minutes, I think. So any, let me go through the questions. Um, next update is May the 9th. Let me just say that before um, I move on. And then we'll have a look at some of these questions. Um, yeah, Dave, I agree. It's a, a much, much nicer tool than it ever was. So did, did you answer that question, Dave, about have you used it for internal events? Because you've got a different tool, haven't you, for your color, your uh, parents' evenings and things. Yeah, we don't use it for parents' evenings. It's I think this is another one of those that I, I feel myself saying this at most of the updates recently. It's a really good start, but it might get even better coming forward. Um, when, I, when I tried to set it up last week, I did note that you can only use the main account for which you set up. You can't apply the appointment schedules to sub calendars okay yeah well if like like i have you've set up sub calendars for different purposes under a service account or under your own personal account then you can't use appointment schedules with those at present um but i can't see that being a huge jump forward to to that functionality being released hopefully anyway yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, it, it. Yeah, it's a shame, that, isn't it? So if you had a, you know, a year nine parents evening calendar, which is a perfectly sensible thing to do, you can currently use the appointment schedules, the old one, but the new one you can't use, which is a great shame. Yeah, you'd have to create a new user for year nine parents evening, yeah. and then you would be able to do that. But quite often in the past, there's various rationales behind how whether we create users or use rooms or have sub calendars or whatever it may be um and i think that may all change again now with this latest release we might have yeah. to revisit some of that yeah i hope so that would be useful i mean i, I just asked you in the chat there you about about that we i've set up some calendars under the admin um login which is sub calendars for like uh the whole school internalized and a whole school external so they've got internal and external um calendar appointments yeah and, and that would be useful for something like you said to you know set up a, a parents evening or something or oh, it's uh yeah I'm, but, I'm not sure how individuals would, would use this i need to take a look at that i think what you, what you would have to do to do that at the moment is to create a new user yeah. for the purpose of the calendar that you want and then delegate that access to that account to to somebody whereas if you just add a new calendar under your um your google calendar yeah. that that isn't available to be selected that would be the ideal i guess in that when you're creating appointment slots you choose which calendar it's for yeah and right. and, and just to be clear um because I, I, it was a while ago now but i was asked this question when i was showing someone appointments if you send someone an appointments calendar link out currently the old one um people were worried that someone would be able to see the rest of their calendar they can't they can only they, they see free busy basically in the old version and um, quite how this new version would work i don't know because it looks like it sets people it shows people the allowed times do you know dave i presume it still shows the other stuff as just busy i think with the new ones i don't think it, it, it only shows you the slots that you choose to release anyway as available so All right, okay it, it doesn't show the full calendar like the like the old one used to do yeah good i mean in effect it makes like a a new calendar doesn't it that it all sits on just feeds back into your calendar so that, yeah it, it, it looks looks so much better it's so much more professional and so much more 2022 it was a bit 1990 was the the old interface that you used to see when you shared that calendar yeah yes yeah, there's, there's not many of us remember that time dave what i understand <laughs> <laughs> i'm having a real dave stop paul dave you're a lovely man i must stop being rude to you <laughs> I'm going to stop now. So, um, Andy, I agree. Yes, a lot similar to the Grammarly stuff, um, and I've been using that for quite a while. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. I might even try turning the Grammarly off and see if it's any better, and then I'll let you know. But yeah, you're quite right. It is very similar to Grammarly. 
Um, and then there's a question from Karen there about are uh, people using chat spaces in schools? Uh, no, we're not in schools, um, Karen, but we use chat a huge amount. So more or less any kind of project or any event that we go to, we have a chat for. We've got chat with lots of our other customers. Um, and I think other customers are now using chat more and more. It's kind of a kind of almost like an informal back channel. So I know City yeah, College we use it quite it. a lot. <clears throat> Sorry, I was gonna say we use it quite a lot within our teams, within our IT team, uh, kind of from a headquarters point of view. And I know the finance team and marketing team, they all do the same. But I was just wondering whether from a school level point of view, whether I don't know, teacher assistants are chatting to each other or teachers are chatting to each other and how that kind of works from teachers sitting in the classroom for alerts and et cetera. I used it when we were in lockdown, when all the teachers were at home and we were at home. So I had one called something like tech support for staff um, and just a staff general one. And we used it in lockdown, but now people are back, back in school, been back in school for a year and a half. They've tended to revert to type and just use emails. We seem to have a real back to email culture here. Um, I don't know whether other schools are experiencing that, but since lockdown and people come into school even though they're only five meters apart people tend to email instead of using chat or the telephone it frustrates them yeah and i can see there's some advantages to using it if assuming that they can or they know how to kind of turn the alerts off so when the teaching is kind of silent but yeah, yeah well, i see sort of things like i don't know there's no cups can everyone return their cups or somebody nicks and nick, um, put you know not put mass resources away and it's like you don't need to send that in an email so no, I mean, I, I sort of liken to it to how you how you communicate to your friends and family, you know, you, um, you know, somebody's at home and you want to let them know that you're going to be late, you don't send them an email, you drop them a chat, you know, or a text or a, a social media message. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's some of that sort of mindset. It's pretty much kind of like the WhatsApp of, of work. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, it seems to be a culture here, well, no, no, I'll... But we've got groups of email it tends to get stuck in our staff group emails is like all full of crap that, that could be on chat really and it just blocks emails up all day long i hate mm. it sounds like you need to get yourself a moderator turn the moderator <laughs> on and they can't use it get what sorry turn the moderator on in your groups and then they can't use it then it sits and someone's got to agree it or not agree and if they don't agree it or they've not had time to agree it then they'll start using an alternative because they'll get a quicker response like yeah chat. yeah it's people like you know somebody's birthday and they bring cake in or whatever all that goes in emails yeah, if you, yeah they send it to like the all staff if you put a moderator and you're all staff then that will you yeah. just won't approve it because you haven't got time to read them so you just read them as and when and just go right no reject stick it on chat yeah yeah that's an idea i mean we've got moderation on but it's it's not linked to everyone it's only for you know spamming really yeah yeah I mean, I think it, it is kind of a cultural change isn't it actually You're quite yeah. right um, and the, the chat groups that they've got you notice the style of it and they do sometimes you know they, they can do that and my printer's broken and can you pop down and have a look that's absolutely fine there's no reason why they can't do those as well but it's just it's about the right tool isn't it that's the key thing and and training them on that is yeah. quite important you know and we do you know our c learning team chat you know we do everything from you know jokes about getting old for birthdays and you know anniversaries you'd be out on release now if you've been murdered someone if you've been that many years ago and all that kind of stuff as well as the as someone got a contact for to you know also some big questions as well and um, but generally the really big things stay in the email thread and for more kind of casual you know corridor or water cooler moments stay in the chat and it works very well i think yeah i agree i'd, I'd agree with you on that paul uh rather than having ten thousand emails where a lot of those are just a yeah i agree and you don't actually need to reply to it to just having the chat and you can literally just glance at the chat we have it just sat the side of the screen um you know everything from a full c learning group through to one or two individual people like if james and myself have got a meeting coming up We'll just liaise on that. Uh, and it is literally like, yeah, more like a, a WhatsApp messaging service. And it's so much easier than um, than back and forth with emails. Um, yeah, totally agree. We use it all the time. Can't imagine we'd ever go back now. Yeah. Does any schools use it for their senior leadership team? So they have a, 
senior leadership team um, chat with a space, you know, so they use it for sharing all their documents. Um, that's a really, you know, I don't, I don't know. Like what Teams is, like Microsoft Teams is. Yeah. You know. We do use one for our IT techs across all of our schools. So I don't know, something's down. Has anybody else got the same thing? Rather than all 45 schools running around trying to find the same issue, it's a, by the way, this is down. I'm looking at it. I'll let you know when it's all fixed. We use it for that quite a bit. Yeah, I, I use it for that. I very rarely get any feedback. People email me on it. I think chats need to be driven. I think there's always a danger that if you just stick people in a group and no one actually interacts with it, then it doesn't matter. So we started a new project last week um, and I posted two or three things in the chat already just to kind of set the tone and start to prompt people to response, to respond on things. Um, eventually they do become self-sustaining, but in the early days, certainly you need to be, um, someone needs to take on the responsibility of pushing that as the vehicle. Because if you don't do that, then they'll just revert back to email again and you'll have the same problem. It won't solve anything. Yeah. They would have just had a, a slight glitch when they went somewhere else and then nothing happened, so they went back. No, so I think you're right. A lot of it's culture. Yeah. I think there's more, more of an immediacy with spaces and chats, though, isn't there, in terms of, you know, this is happening. Is anybody else seeing this issue? Blah, blah, blah. Whatever it may be, if that's from a technical perspective or I've got chocolate in my office if anybody wants it. Whereas I think with an email, people feel beholden to going back and responding. Even if, if somebody is off for two weeks with COVID or whatever it may be, they come back, they've got a massive swathe of emails to go back through. Whereas they might look at the last couple of chat or spaces messages and just realise actually that was last week. It doesn't really, not really relevant to me. So I think it's that, it's that immediacy that feels different to me with chat yeah. than, than email. Yeah, with the chat, I mean, I let the whole team know i had a um was last week i had a planned power cut so obviously i was going to be out of action other than my mobile signal which is rubbish here in rural norfolk uh i was able to just let the whole team know uh very quickly they didn't need to respond to it but just to say thursday morning i've got no power between nine and twelve o'clock you know and it's brilliant but i mean you know as Paul said, you know, we can ask people, do you know someone here or have you got a contact there? Uh, but there's also, you can use chat for, you know, online sort of like staff room banter. I think the other thing is as well, when, when you throw it out to a chat group, if one person responds, everybody's aware of it. Whereas with email, you've got that difficulty yeah. of reply versus reply all, haven't you? So I think if it's been responded to in the chat, you know that you can ignore that and carry on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I tend to be quite brutal on my email. I'm just a I'm not an email jockey sitting writing it all day. I literally look at my emails morning, lunchtime, and before I go at night. But uh, you know that that's me. If it's urgent, you either call me, come and see me, or send the chat. Good to know, Andy. I'll chat you next time. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> Only if you want a quick response, sorry, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a couple of the comments in the in the chat. Um, Francis, I agree. I wouldn't necessarily use chat with students. Maybe the older students, but certainly not the younger ones. But I'd use the chat stream in Google Classroom because you can mute them and remove stuff there. Clearly, if you're not on that classroom when it happens, it's going to stay until you see it and remove it. But I would, yeah, that's a, a more secure way of doing that. Um, should you do that but the other other um thing i was going to say is that the chat will begin is already beginning to get better and better there's a little meat bot a little bot called meat at meat that you can say find a find a book a book an appointment with chris van Halen and myself for tomorrow and it'll look at my calendar and chris's calendar in that meet that chris and i are in and make some suggestions and you go at meet a and it'll just book the schedule or you can click the plus sign next to the chat window now and calendars there and you can add a calendar in and it will show you their calendars you can see when they're available so there's lots of nice extra bits of things in there and um, you can actually create documents inside the meet now with that same plus sign and um, so you can do some work things in there as well which is kind of quite nice yeah it's good if you setting up a, a quick <coughs> google meet or something in it paul you'll just say are you free for five minutes you can put a link to the meet straight in um and jump, jump on it straight away rather than doing it separately through your calendar or whatever 
Um, so increasingly, we, we're using that as well. It's harder and harder to get away from Paul, which is a disaster, really. <laughs> <laughs> which is fine. Yeah, as it should. Going back to the issue that Miriam raised about, you know, chat for students, I, we currently disabled it for all our students. I, I, I think, you know, your, your point about looking at controlling content, um, I'm sort of on the fence with that about if, if children want to be able to communicate, it might be better if you, if you can. For the older students, certainly, you know, year seven and up open up chat so that they do have a forum for that because for our school it's it's smooth all monitored in terms of the content of that rather than re them reverting to a social media or their phone um we haven't done yet because there's there's quite a lot of resistance to it in school but i wonder what people's thoughts on are uh, about enabling chat for students i'm just going to say yeah, just before Owen jumps in now, I would, I would say, Andy, that at least it's kind of visible to you if you're doing it that way. Because they're going to find yeah. ways they're going to find ways of communicating, aren't they? It's almost like yeah. driving it underground by not allowing them to use something that is visible to, um, you know, staff and, and safeguarding officers. So I, I would encourage it, providing it's it, it is monitored. I think I don't know what I think if you else can thinks. still have like a student um, acceptable use policy as to what yeah. is acceptable mm. and what's not and then they obviously still have to you know you follow that policy or their chat is or their hangout whatever is turned off so you've still got that option and i think it's in vault as well isn't it so you can still search on vault like if yeah. you do need to go back or something in a yeah. book or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it, i'm very much of a keep it open and monitor it person mm. rather than a yeah. lock it down on block yeah oh and did you yeah. want to say something uh, yeah, so um, I finished uh, A level uh, in June last year, and I would say having chat would have been a a very useful thing for me because it would have provided easy access to uh, my other classmates who might not be uh, willing to uh, give me their social media or their number, so I could interact with them um, in a school forum where they where it's regulated of course and yeah you could put a teacher in there just to monitor and make sure that everything is is okay but i think it would be very useful for many students yeah, for you, Pat Owen. how old are you oh, i'm 19. yeah so i mean that we're a you know three to 16 school so i would just be looking at for 11 to 16. i mean our students use the chat bit within classroom um, we've enabled that on most of our classrooms so that they can, you know, talk and comment on the stream. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, I think that's a really positive thing in terms of promoting, you know, the two of the four C's, the collaboration and communication. And, and give students a real positive thing that, you know, they can use that app on their phones and it's it's a positive way to use their phones rather than it just being TikTok and Snapchat, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's right. Dave, did you want to say something? Yeah, I completely agree with that that approach, Andy, in terms of it's better off us having visibility of what they're doing than, yeah. than driving it underground. However, um, school leaders don't always feel the same way because they I've had some resistance from one school where they're saying that, well, essentially what we're doing by turning this on is encouraging them to be communicating during lessons and it can be a distraction and so on and so yeah. forth and you know when you make the point yeah but they're going to do that anyway on a platform that we don't control yeah. they say but that's fine we're not responsibility for that we, we don't have responsibility for that um so it's and, and again that's cultural because that's not the case at all schools that i work with and um, some of them would completely agree and i think what the the compromise position was was that we allowed students to join chats but not to create their own so that the chats were created by staff so there's always a member of staff in in every chat so that there is that element of um, not moderation because it's not preventing things being posted but there's visibility of what's being said um what we found though is that the kids just went on to their own things. They, they just they just go into Snapchat or whatever it is that they're they're happy to use to send yeah. the subversive content and and ultimately chat. Uh, so um, yeah, chat Google Chat then becomes more of a workspace. So that feeds into what Owen was saying. It would be 
it would be beneficial then for actual work rather than just as i said in the in in the it's confusing isn't it in the chat on this google meet um yeah. it, it's not it's it, it's it's not whatsapp you know we don't share the memes and everything in chat that gets shared in all the whatsapp groups that we have but it can be useful for teaching digital citizenship and digital safety and and those kinds of things because we're not just there to to shut them down from using products we're there to to guide them in how best yeah. and how most yeah. responsible but i think though dave that's exactly right that it's about teaching the students what what um app you use for what so i mean you know we probably use social media in some form or another whether that's linkedin whether that's TikTok, facebook i don't know and all of the others in your you know from you as a personal point of view but from a work point of view you've got your work hack on a hat on and you're you know sending various messages in whichever forum so it's also understanding that you know you understand that difference but the students don't understand that difference so yeah open up chat and then teach them which one you use for what is that you know, is that you, want to chat with your mates. you know if it's not to do with school probably don't use the chat or use the classroom stream probably go and use something else yeah there's that quote, I don't know if it was a long time ago, the Rose Report about keeping our children safe on the internet. And she said she drew an analogy with a swimming pool. And she said, we take kids to the swimming pool where there's a risk of them dying. So the risks are very high. There are anti-slip mats, there are lifeguards, there are signs, there are, you know, all of these things, but we still teach them to swim. So we put sensible measures in place, but we still teach them to manage the risk. Yeah, so I think that that's kind of what you've all been saying, isn't it? That's that's just a crucial. We've got to do that. One of the questions I had was, I know that in you can set rules in your admin panel that says, if these keywords are used in an email, then quarantine it. Can you do that with chat? Does anyone know? I've not seen any settings for that. No. Not sure. That would be useful. Yeah, yeah. Because asking about your, you said you set up allow children to join stuff do you set spaces up then for them like you know senior chat um i've, I've not students. we've not gone ahead and done that it's something that i proposed but we it was right. it rejected by the leadership team of the school that was that we're having this discussion with so you would set up a, a, a space for students to chat and allow them to join that if they wanted that was the that was a proposal yes yeah no, say that seems like a really good as a compromise a really good way forward then and they can't set up their own spaces it gives you an element of control doesn't it rather than it being a free-for-all yeah yeah and then then they've obviously got the sort of classroom centric ones within classroom yeah um, and and yeah i know you can you can set um kind of what do we call them called matters are they in in vault i'm trying to think of the right name where it monitors what's going on so that it will alert you if something's been posted that's inappropriate, but it won't, it doesn't do anything, does it? It just tells you that it's happened. So it's kind of there and it persists, doesn't it? So you are almost want to, the option to remove it if you if you possibly can. Yeah. yeah. Can I just go back to classroom and ask anybody if they've got them set up like a, a VLE or a LLM, I can't say LMS, whether staff create, create all that, that structure within topics for the whole subject? and then set assignments and, and um, pieces from it or do they tend just to have a whole series of assignments we did it that way during lockdown but we've gone back gone back to just using it on an ad hoc basis now but yeah it was used quite extensively like that during lockdown yeah yeah ours was we you know quite a few staff realized that they could create you know their whole whole curriculum there so that and then, then set assignments and that's why i like the the sound of those um practice sets that they're like a, yeah. a multitude of assignments linked together in a in a topic group that if you had that as a, a vle stroke lms set up within classroom then that would be you know allow students to because technology is all about what they do outside the classroom as well rather yeah. than just the it's not just the, the teaching and learning that goes on in that hour of lesson. It's about, you know, outside the classroom that they can access all that at home and wherever they are in lunchtime, at break time, um, when they're working in little groups on their own, that that material's there. I, I see that more of a uh, benefit in promoting 
a learning management system approach for, for teaching rather than just assignments. Yeah, if if they take a copy of a classroom, and I don't know if you know this, when you take a copy, um, if they have already done that in lockdown and they take a copy of that lockdown classroom, all the assignments get converted to drafts in the new copy, all the topic titles remain, the chat stream gets wiped and the students get wiped, but the teachers remain. So they've just then got to add the new class in to start that thing. So they haven't got that whole thing about building topics every single time with a brand new classroom. They could kind of shortcut it slightly by taking a copy of an existing one that's already got all the topics in and all got, already got all the assignments in. Yeah. So they probably need to adjust a bit, wouldn't they? Dates and, you know, there might be a new resource they found or they didn't like that assignment and they got a better one. But a yeah. lot of them would already be there and they just have to assign it as and when. Yeah, that's, I mean, uh, that's good. We, ours tend to, for year seven and eight, um, have individual year classes so that they they move year on year we run our gcses over three years so a lot of the teachers now create a classroom that does for year nine ten and eleven mm -hmm. so being able to copy that for a new cohort for the for the next gcse group i wasn't aware you could do that that was quite useful if, if they've archived it, you can also do a copy from an archive. As long as there's still a teacher in that class, they can go into yeah. that archive and still do a copy, even without taking the original out of the archive. Yeah, rather than keeping all their stuff just in in their drive, because it, it structures it as well, doesn't it? Yeah. I think topic we, we use classroom for our governors, and I'm trying to get our maybe leadership team onto uh, you know using that a bit more internally for like a staff drive because it's a lot more flexible to to search through stuff than an index of a, a shared drive i feel yeah absolutely but our governors get on great with with a classroom called governors because it's got all the topics the minutes the agendas um all of that um they've all got you know internal emails they, they don't use anything other than their, their school email for accessing all of that and that works really well simple for them because you just open up classroom and it's all there yeah, the topics are great for that and clickable yeah. links so it filters out into to the topic you want to look for which is really good yeah absolutely yeah. excellent good so yeah you, oh, classroom admin's already gone we never found out who classroom admin was did we so we're actually at three at one o'clock actually i've just realized that's been a great discussion that's been a really interesting chat about chats more useful than the updates in many ways <laughs> thank you very much for that that was very Brilliant. useful I'm um, lovely to see you all. I'll stop the recording now. Yeah. As always. And um, tech updates tomorrow. Um, if you're around, you're more than welcome to join.